Super Walker Success on Georgia's Osaba Island, William Hovey Smith, 2014. I'm the author of the forthcoming book, Profit, that'll tell you how to make a million or maybe billion dollar business. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman, and I'm standing here in the middle of the hunt station at Osaba Island, and it is about 4 o'clock in the morning, and the camp is waking up out there, and little lights are going on, hither, hither, and yon, as people are getting ready to go on their hunt and depart at 5 a.m. Yeah! They're going to put us on trailers, and they're going to take us out there to the neither regions in the pitch black dark and put us out. And then we're supposed to go out there and shoot deer and hogs. Yeah. And in the end of the day, they pick them up, drag them back here, and we field dress them and put them in some coolers over there. And I'm going to keep you posted on how things happen on this hunt, because you can do it too. I'm up a palm tree in my tree stand on a narrow neck of land on the road leading to Helicopter Point. And the concept here is that hogs or deer will traverse this land and I'll have a shot at it with 50 yards which is within the range of my super walker. Now you see the marsh out there and this is extreme high tide. And so everything on the marsh has been pushed off now and it's an inland. And also, this is a near full moon. So consequently, the beasties will probably move mostly between about 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Now, I did jump one deer coming in. But everything else is fairly well bedded down, and that's why I'm taking the chance and recording this right now, because I don't expect much to happen. Now, you see here one of Ospa Island's huge oaks. Now, these are dropping acorns all over. But the deer and hogs really love them, and they'll come in and feed on them, of course. And coming around, you see Spanish moss. If you don't know it, it's an interesting beastie. It does not uh, drain from the plants. It's not a parasite, but it's certainly very spectacular and was once used, <laughs> believe it or not, to fill the seats of Henry Ford's automobiles. Yeah, it really was. And sweeping around like this, you see more oaks and more grassy areas. So I have shots that, yeah, out to about 50 yards, which is within the capabilities of the gun. So I'm just going to relax and hang out here for a while. I'm about, oh, a mile and a fraction from the drop-off point. I took my garden way cart in here and brought my stand in most of the way, and then uh, a little bit, uh, five, six, seven hundred yards, I had to hump it to, to where I am right now. But, you know, no, no real big problem. So we sit and we await developments. Here I am at the second setup on the first day of Osaba. And nothing has happened this morning. Uh, no shots fired since we were put out. So the deer just aren't moving yet. The tide is high in the mornings. So I moved my setup further inland off the peninsula and on to the main part of the island. And what I've done here, if you look over this way as I pan, you'll notice some huge oaks. And then you'll see an area that's relatively vegetation free. Now that is an old bayou, you might want to call it, old water passage. And it's full of acorns. These big trees are dropping all the time. There's a crossing here at the road. So from two different directions, both coming from the marsh and across the island, there's traffic. So right now, with rut on, I think, uh, this should be a good place. Well, we have taken our Osaba deer with the Super Walker. And what you see is a drag path, and now the marsh that I took it out of. I was actually hunting hogs, and I'd crossed the peninsula from one side to the other. And this particular hunt area has marshes on both sides. It's a long, thin, narrow piece. And instead of hog, there was a buck. So for Osaba standards, this is a decent sized deer. Uh, quick look, looks like an eight pointer. Just drug it out through, well, ankle to knee deep mud. And this is a drier part you're looking at here. 
But anyway, the walker got the job done, and more about the details later. It was a struggle finally seeing some game, and particular deer. Uh, this is the last morning of the three-day hunt on Osaba Island. And we set up in a tree stand this morning and decided our better opportunities were to try to move. And so we did some stalking, actually looking for hogs. And I'm hunting a little triangular piece of land like this. I started on this side, and now I'm about here on this side. And I saw the deer walking the edge of the marsh, and I shot it at about 20, 30 yards or so. And it went down, bloosh, right down in the mud. He was still struggling. I gave it two more shots in the neck to finish it. But this is a nice, typical Osaba Island buck deer. Uh, these deer are small. They don't get big. Uh, he'll probably dress out something in the neighborhood of 70 pounds or so. Uh, some of the deer taken from here are really tiny. I mean, uh, look more like dogs and deer, but they eat pretty well. And so, well, the super walker did the job. The load I used was 37 grains of triple FG and a styrofoam wad and Kato Ajama's 220 grain bullet. And I don't know for sure, but I rather imagine the bullet completely penetrated. Uh, the shot hit in the neck, and it dropped him right there on the spot in the marsh. It was still struggling, so I gave it another couple of shots to finish it. But, uh, yeah, wound up being a real good hunt. And we'll probably have to relay pack it. Uh, take my gear out, find a path, then come back and take the deer out in pieces. Uh, three trips. But if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Because this is a fine deer and it's going home. I'm out in the WMA and before I go back into camp, I need to unload my pistol completely. So I'm going to fire a couple of shots so you have an idea about what it looks like to shoot one of these things. Uh, you know you shot something. The recoil is not as bad as some. First off, of course, we have to dial up the aim point sight. Cock. Aim. One dead water bottle, dead center. Aim. One dead water bottle, dead center. Bang, bang. This gun will shoot. We have concluded our hunt at Georgia's fabled Osaba Island. And as you can see, we were successful. Uh, this was a three day hunt and obviously a camp out in one of the most unique and beautiful places in North America that anyone can hunt. Yes, this is a quota hunt sponsored by the state of Georgia and all you have to do is get the regulations and sign up and uh, see if you can get drawn uh, for the hunt, just like any other Kubota hunt anywhere. And Georgia's out-of-state licenses are not that expensive. Uh, about $175 will probably get the job done. Now, as usual, uh, we use some interesting tools on this hunt, especially the Colt Super Walker. Now the Colt Super Walker is a big honking revolver. Here is a photo without the aim sight. And in it, I have a load of 37 grains of triple seven, a styrofoam wad, and a hard bullet lube over ball wad. And this is a load that's been in this gun for over a month. Uh, no problem. Now what I was hoping to do is be up in my tree stand and see a critter below and make a very careful aim precision shot like that. Well, it didn't come down quite that way. Uh, as it was, the critter was walking along the edge of the marsh. There was no place to brace on. Uh, the weeds were just about this tall everywhere and nothing solid enough for a rest, nor time to find one. So I shot from double-handed offhand like this at the moving creature. Well, it seems I have a tendency when I'm shooting game to pull to the right. 
and although I aimed high shoulder, I hit neck. Well, that was good because the beastie went down gasplat right there. Yeah, this did the job. But it wasn't where I aimed, which tells me and should tell you that, yeah, if you possibly can, always shoot these guns from rest positions and make your precision shots. Now, we had a rifle that was on the hunt but just never got used. And this is the night rolling block muzzleloader here. It was one of the last rifles designed by Tony Knight and a good gun. I just never have a, had a chance to score on a piece of game with it. So it'll go on my next hunt to Cumberland Island. Now we have some interesting knives. This is a new knife by Gerber. And it is a knife designed for hunting. It has a good blade. As I unpacked it and used it without sharpening, it is, I would call, semi-sharp. The blade will take a better edge than it came from the factory. So you should edge this knife before you actually take it to the field, as should I have, for that matter. We also have another interesting knife material here, and this is fiberglass, would you believe? Yeah. It's very lightweight, particularly for something like a neck knife, uh, non-magnetic, yeah, and it will take an edge, but not as good an edge as steel. Now, I did try to skin the deer with it, and you could, you could, but it's like skinning a deer with a stone, too. I mean, it, yeah, it, it, it could be done, but it's, it's pretty rough going, okay? And we also have a sheath here by Ken Warner, my old editor. And Ken made a variety of knives at one stage, but in it is a Ginju knife. And this is their hunter, uh, produced from stainless Damascus steel, sharp as a razor. I mean, this thing will cut. But they didn't know how to market it to American hunters. They shipped it in a cute little bamboo box with a plastic lid on it. No sheath? Wow! Well, they just don't know anything about hunters and hunting knives. Okay. Uh, yes, the knife functionally does very well. It has this aluminum down here, which would get terribly cold in cold weather. Uh, so, no, good steel, excellent blade, poorly mounted, and certainly poorly serviced with utility items, like shades. Yeah. Uh, old stuff went with me. Cart. Use it to load and unload my stuff. Also use it to push my deer out. My stool went with me. Uh, old camp gear. Tomcat tree stand. New chair from Shakespeare here. And this is a new to item to the camping kit. But otherwise, yeah, pretty much me and the old stuff went hunting again. And, no, uh, well, you know what? We did pretty good after all. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Other things were happening back at the house. Among my prize-winning books are Extreme Muzzleloading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing, and all of these are available as softcover and e-books. I have an eight-book e-book series on muzzleloading guns out for 2013-14.
including one on hunting with muzzle-loading revolvers that will feature the Super Walker pistols hunts. The Gerber Moment fixed blade knife did very well to cut up the deer after I put an edge on it after I got it home. Now I do have a number of videos on building and load development for the Super Walker. It was mounted with an AIM red dot sight and ramrod and bases installed by Dykes Reber of North Little Rock. Now it has a matte finish by H&M Coatings of Akron, Ohio. Now the load information is written out below. And this is a real effective load with Kato's 220 grain bullet and a hard over bullet wad. This is an accurate, effective, and long live load for taking deer and hogs. For info on my books, blogs, and videos, go to my website at www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless. <laughs>